let's take a look at how you're doing. If you're not done, we'll see how, how you did on the ones you've got done so far. Um, starting out with the first one up here. We're going to write those one above the other. You could have, by the way, you could have dropped the parentheses on the second one and changed all the signs and combined them. That's just fine if that's how you're about to do it. But I'm going to move it over and line them up here. So we got the 3x to the third. What do I notice that's missing there? x squared is missing there. There's no x squared in that. Now when I line up, the 7x squared goes under my 0x squared that I had to put in there. My negative 11x goes under the 5x. And my positive 4 goes under the 9. And I am subtracting. Negative 9 minus 4 is a negative 13. 5x minus the negative 11x. 5 minus the negative 11 is a positive 16. So it's a positive 16x. 0 minus 7 is a negative 7x squared. And there's nothing to subtract from the 3x to the third. How many of you caught that there was the missing x squared there? I fooled all you with that one? Okay, so you do have to be careful to make sure those powers are the same. Remember that power of x is kind of like your place value. That's what you've got to line up with each other. Number two, I didn't try anything silly like that with you. So it's just 4x squared minus 13x plus 2. And then we're going to line up the 5x squared, the positive 9x, and the negative 12. And we are adding now as we go down. 2 and negative 12 make a negative 10. Negative 13x and positive 9x is a negative 4x. 4x squared and 5x squared is a 9x squared. So any questions on those first two? Okay, 3 and 4 here. Number three, I could set it up, you know, one over the other like I did with my addition and subtraction up above. I'm going to go ahead and do it a short way with the FOIL method that we've, we've seen. FOIL means we multiply the first two. 3x and 5x is 15x squared. Then we'll multiply the outside. 3x times 2 is a positive 6x. Then we will do the inside. That's a negative 7 times 5 is 5x is a negative 35x. I'm going to put that under the 6x so that we can combine those later. Negative 7 times 2 is a negative 14. Now I can combine nothing to divide with combine with the negative 14 ones. 6x and negative 35x is a negative 29x. And nothing to combine with the 15x squared. Questions on that one? Number four here is kind of an order of operations problem. There are two problems and one there to do, really. We have the first set of parentheses. We should always ask, do we need to do anything inside there? Well, there is nothing we can do inside that set of parentheses. 2x squared and a negative 9x have different names. We can't combine them. This other parentheses is the same way. 4x and a negative 7 ones cannot be combined. So there's nothing we can do inside the parentheses. There are no exponents, so then we look back at multiplication and division, and we do have five times that parentheses. 
5 times 2x squared is 10x squared. 5 times negative 9x is negative 45x. Good. Now, as we move up to the next parentheses over here, this is another multiplication. We notice that that's not 3x times the parentheses. It is a negative 3x times the parentheses. So negative 3x times 4x is minus 12x squared. And negative 3x times negative 7 is a positive 21x. And now we'll notice we've got 10x squared and a negative 12x squared. Those both are x squared, so we can combine them. 10 and negative 12 make a negative 2x squared. We'll also notice we have a negative 45x and a positive 21x. They're both x's, so we can combine them. Negative 45 and positive 21 makes negative 24x. So there's our result there. So just a quick show of hands, how many have had at least two of those correct? Three? Okay. Any questions on any of those? We will do more like this last one as time goes on. Getting maybe a little bit more complex as we move up through them. Another thing I wanted to review, one of our more difficult concepts from last class is converting these phrases into algebraic sentences or equations or expressions. For example, we might have 7 times a number. Reduced by 8. Now I'm going to give you a few examples. Here. Three times the difference. Of a number and 9. And finally, the product of 6 and a number increased by 2. We have to give those three a shot, and we'll look at them in a little bit. So for the first one, seven times a number reduced by eight, what do you get? Seven times x minus eight, or just seven x minus eight. The second one's a little tricky. Three times the difference of a number of nine. Helps if I put my b in number, doesn't it? Hopefully you can tell what I meant there. Of a number and nine. What's that going to look like? The difference is subtraction. So three times, is going to be three times something, but the difference is a result of a subtraction problem. The difference of a number and nine is going to be x minus nine. That's in parentheses so that we multiply it by 3 after we subtract. The product of 6 and a number increased by 2. I was intentionally distracting a little bit on this one. What is the product of 6 and a number? 6 times the number, just 6x. Increased by 2? 
plus two. People get used to, they see the product, of, you know, they see the, the sum or the difference of, there's going to be parentheses in it usually. Um, when you see the product of, they start to think the same way. But here, the product of six and a number is just a fancy way of saying six times a number. It would have been different if we would have said... The product of six and the sum of a number and two. Now it's the product of six and a sum. So it's six times a sum. That sum is of a number and two. Okay, enough review for now. I want to show you something in my math lab. First of all, did everybody get the first quiz done yesterday? Good deal. It's quite different going from the homework to the quizzes when you don't have the hints in your hand. It's real easy to be going through the homework and just uh, click a hint or whatever and think this is going really well. It's really easy. The tough part with math is not really doing the math. The tough part is deciding what process the problem's asking you to do. And that's what the homework, those hints show you what process it's asking you to do. So then doing it is, is really the easy part of it. When you hit those quizzes, it can be really easy to lock up because you don't have those hints to kind of push you in the right direction as to what to do. So as you're doing the homework, it's good to be careful. Now be careful that you are you are actually trying to figure them out without using the hints. Okay, so on the homework, this is actually the homework assignment that is due today at one o'clock. If you are doing one of the homework problems and you have a question, you will notice right here, it says 1.2.53. What that means is if you wanted to look this up in your textbook, that is chapter one, section two. And to be even more specific, if you're looking at the end of chapter one, section two, it's actually question 53 at the end of section two. So that tells you what section of the textbook to go look at. Now you can click question help and click view textbook. I have pop-ups right now blocked, of course. And it will, depending on your connection, let me try it again. It will pull up that page in the textbook that has this topic on it. But a lot of times, if you're anything like me, it's a lot easier just to have the textbook open beside my computer. It's easier to see it out of the textbook. I don't have Flash Player, so. But anyway, yeah, that little part right there on each problem tells you that, that is Chapter 1, Section 2. Well, I have it open. Anybody have any questions off the homework or the quiz and stuff? My math lab? We're good to go. Okay, then. So, our new topic that we're going to start with today. We're going to start with things that look like this. A variable equals a number. And, of course, that is called an equation. And the key to understanding an equation is that symbol right there. What is that symbol called? The equal sign. What does it mean? There you go. They have the same value. 
it's often tough to define what an equal sign means without using the word equals. Um, they do have the same value. In fact, it means that what's on one side has exactly the same value as what's on the other side. You can even think of it as a balance scale where it balances around the equal sign. What's on the left has exactly the same value or exactly the same weight as what's on the right. All equations start out in a simple form like this, as a variable equals a number, or a number equals a variable. They are built from there. There are several things we can use to build equations. All of our basic operations. Yeah, you know, we can do addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Those can all be used. And our more complex operations, which we haven't really got to yet, but we can use those exponents, the powers and the roots. Um, there's trig functions and inverse trig functions. There will be exponentials and logarithms. You don't necessarily need those last several listed down because we're not going to get to these in this course. And for today, we're going to look at just simple addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. But these are all, all these are is just different operations we can do with numbers. You'll notice, by the way, all these operations come in pairs. Addition and subtraction are pairs. Remember, we mentioned that, that word called inverses. These are what we call inverses. What that means. Um, if I pick a number, somebody pick a number between 5 and 20. Just yell one up. 15? Okay. Somebody pick another number between 5 and 10. 4. If I add 4 to 15, of course, I get 19. If I wanted to take that 19 and get it back to a 15, what would I do to it? I would subtract 4. Adding 4 and subtracting 4 are inverses because one of them reverses or undoes the other. Multiplication and division, same thing. Let's start with that 15 again. 15 times 4 would be 60. If I wanted to take that 60 and get back to 15, I would need to divide by 4. So multiplying and dividing are inverses. One reverses or undoes the other. The same would happen with powers and roots. We'll look at that more later on in the course. So for now, we can build on to this equation using any of these for now, we're just going to limit ourselves to those four operations. We'll use any of these operations, actually. But for now, we'll just use those basic four. Let's say I decide I want to do this. I want to add four. So I add four here. This is going to become x plus four. However, that scale is going to tip unless I do what? Add four to the other side. I have to do the exact same thing to the other side. Six plus four makes ten. So that's still balanced, so it's still an equation. It's just a little more complex. I've built pieces onto it. Now, normally, we're not asked to build equations. What we're asked to do is solve equations. And when we're given that command to solve an equation, what it's really asking us to do is to take that equation back apart and get back to this form. A variable equals a number. Well, this equation was built by adding 4. So what are we going to do to take it apart? Subtract 4. The, the inverse, the opposite. Subtracting 4 removes that piece. 
Use this with X. Again, to keep that balance, I have to do the exact same thing to the other side. 10 minus 4 is 6. So we've solved it. We got back to that form of a variable equals a number. Now in this one, we built it. And since we built it, we knew that it was built by adding 4. That's usually not the case. So the trickiest part of solving an equation is figuring out how it was built so that we know how to take it apart. We might have something like this. 2 is equal to y minus 7. To figure out how that equation was built, we first find the equal sign, and then we identify which side of the equal sign as the variable. So that right side there has y in it. That's my variable. Then we have to ask ourselves, what is keeping the variable? from being alone. In other words, what is keeping the variable from being by itself on that side of the equation? If we think of that balance scale, what's keeping the variable from being all by itself on one side of the scale? Well, right now it's the number seven, right? The second question we have to ask is what operation was used to attach that number. In other words, what operation was used to build this on? Well, the seven has been subtracted from the Y. So this equation was built, what was done to Y to build this equation? It was built by subtracting seven. How are we going to take it apart? Add 7. We add 7 here. It gets rid of that minus 7. Leaves us with y. Now again, to keep our scale from tipping, we have to do the exact same thing to the other side. Adding 7 to the 2 makes 9. What if we're unsure of our work? Well, we can always double check an equation. We can take this original equation, 2 equals y minus 7, and we just said 9 equals y. So I can replace y with 9, and I better get the same value on each side. Well, this side's just the 2. 9 minus 7 is 2. So that equation checks out. That solution checks out. 9 is a solution for y in that equation. So looking at this one, again, going through the process, here's our equal sign. This is where the variable is. What's keeping the variable z from being by itself? The 3. What operation was used to attach the 3? It was multiplied. So to get rid of it, we're going to divide. I'm just going to use the fraction bar for division. That removes that 3, leaving us with z. And, of course, we have to do the same on the other side. 21 divided by 3 is 7. Now, it doesn't stay that simple. These first few examples we saw are what's called one-step equations. Only one thing has been built onto the equation, so there's only one step to solve it. Our most common form of equation is called a two-step equation might look like this. Five X minus seven equals 38. Now we find our equal sign. We identify which side the variable's on. It's on the left side. We ask what's keeping the variable from being alone? Well, we have the five and we have the seven. 
What operation is attaching the 5? It's multiplied. And the 7? Subtraction. Subtracted. So now we have to ask ourselves how this was built. What was done to our variable? What was done to x? According to order of operations, if x were a number, what would I have to do first? Would I multiply it by the 5 or would I subtract the 7? Order of operations says multiplication comes before subtraction, right? So when this equation was built, x was multiplied by 5, and then 7 was subtracted from it. Well, when we go to solve it, we're taking the equation apart. Just like anything else you might put together, whether you're putting together um, a toy that you bought for a kid or a piece of furniture you've purchased that needs to be assembled or even a car motor or anything else. You've finished putting it together. You've just put on the last piece. If you need to take it back apart, what's going to be the first piece you take off? The last piece you put on. Exactly. And you're going to go in reverse order, aren't you? The last piece you put on, then you take that off, then the next to the last, and so on. So you can go backwards. And so when we're solving these equations, we have to remember we are going backwards. Our order of operation says it was put together this way. To take it apart, we've got to go in reverse. So what's the op what do we do to get rid of subtracting 7? We add 7. That's gone. We're going to have to make sure we add 7 to the other side. So over here, the minus 7 is gone. We've got 5x equals, on the other side, 38 plus 7 is 45. And now then we have to get rid of the multiplying by 5, which means we're going to divide by 5. Again, on the left side, dividing by 5 just cancels out the 5. We have x. On the right side, 45 divided by 5 is 9. We've solved that equation. x equals 9. Now again, we can double check this. We can go back to that original equation. 5x minus 7 equals 38. And if x truly does equal 9, we can replace x with 9. So 5x becomes 5 times 9 minus 7 equals 38. Well, the right side of that is just 38. Order of operations over here, 5 times 9 is 45. 45 minus 7 is 38. So it does check out. We do have the same value on both sides if we let x equal 9. Oh, come on now. Okay. So here. Again, we try to ask what is done to the variable when this is put together. We find our equal sign. Here's the variable. What's keeping the variable from being alone is the 3 and the 8. The 8 has been added and the 3 has been multiplied. Which, which happens first, multiplication or addition, when we're putting things together? Multiplication. So x was multiplied by 3 first, and then 8 was added to it. So to take this apart, we need to... What's the opposite of adding 8? Subtract 8. So 35 minus 8 is 27. Here the plus 8 and the minus 8 cancel out. We have 3x. Next step would be to... Divide by 3. 
x equals 9 again. Once again, we can double check that, see if it works. Going back to that original equation. 35 equals 3x plus 8. Well, if we're saying x is 9, that has to be 35 equals 3x becomes 3 times 9 plus 8. 35 has nothing to, to do to it. 3 times 9 is 27. 27 plus 8 is 35. So it checks out. That appears to work. So 9 equals x or x equals 9 is the solution. If you were to go on into like a college algebra or even tech math, you would run into equations that have more than one solution. That's why you hear me always saying x equals 9 is a solution. Um, it's actually the only solution for this equation. Anything we do in this class is pretty much only going to have one solution unless we see a square root question. But be aware that there are equations that do have more than one possible solution that make them true. So anyway, I'm going to have you guys try one. So 5y minus 1 equals 29. I'll give you a minute in your notes to give that one. So, I don't expect you to always write out what's been done to the variable. Should be able to mostly keep track of it in your head. We can see here, y has been multiplied by 5, and then 1 has been subtracted from it. So to solve it, we're going to have to do what? Add 1. So it removes the minus 1, so we have 5y there. 29 plus 1 is 30. And then, divide by 5. Removes the 5 there to give us y. 30 divided by 5 is 6. Now again, if you wanted to, you could double check that. 5y becomes 5 times 6 minus 1. We have 29 on this side, 5 times 6 is 30, minus 1 gives us 29 on the left side as well. So it does check out. y equals 6 is a solution to that equation. Any questions on that one? Now there are often little things that make it look more complicated. We might have things like this. Looking at this, this looks like a lot more complicated equation. But in reality, it's the same as what we have up above. The first step in solving any equation is to try to simplify each side. So before we try to do anything to solving an equation, before we look at you know, what was done to the variable and how do we take it apart, we try to simplify each side. And on this equation, if we're thinking about that balanced scale, we see that on the left side, we have a negative 5 and a negative 7, which makes negative 12. So instead of 2x minus 5 minus 7, we're just going to write as 2x minus 12 equals 4. That's equivalent. All we've done is simplified or combined things on the one side of the equation. Now, of course, to solve that, what would be the first thing we do? We would add 12 to both sides. So 2x equals 4 plus 12 16. And then 5 by 2. We get x equals 8. Now I'm not going to keep plugging them back in to double check them, but you guys can, can do that. I recommend you do get in the habit of that. On tests and quizzes and stuff, on tests you have unlimited time. Quizzes, if you have the time, it's a good way to go back and double check your answers. Let's look at some other things that could happen. So 
So something like this. Again, that looks more complex, but it really isn't. What can we combine here? The 15 plus 8 on the left side gives us 23. And now again, our equation is back into a form where it's that two-step form, as we said. Two steps to solve it. So what's going to be the next thing we do to solve this one? We subtract 2. That cancels out the plus 2 there, giving us 3x. 23 minus 2 is 21. And then we divide by 3. 21 divided by 3 is 7. Over here, the 3s just cancel out to give us x. 7 equals x. Over here... Same kind of thing. You know, we're thinking that balanced scale here. We can simplify or combine things on one side. What can be combined here? You got it. 3x and 2x, which makes 5x. Now, we can't forget we still got the minus 7 there. Equals 28. So all we did so far was we just... Simplified or combined, 3x minus 7 plus 2x is equivalent to 5x minus 7. Now we can go ahead and start to solve this. What would we do first? Add 7. Good. So we've got 5x over here because the adding 7 removes the minus 7. On the other side, 28 plus 7 is 35. And then, divide by 5. X equals 7. Okay. There is going to be a new quiz. that is due tomorrow, Thursday, at 11.59 p.m. Should be open now. I believe it opened at like 8 o'clock this morning for you. So you should be able to work on that quiz anytime between now and tomorrow evening at 11.59 p.m. There will be a new homework due Monday. That you can get started on. We have not covered all the material on this new homework yet. We will finish it up tomorrow. We'll do more with solving these equations tomorrow as well. Also, a reminder. If you look at the assignment schedule. Next week, Thursday. This test one, that's the end of our third week already. What will happen next week is on Monday, we'll present new material. That will wrap up unit one. On Wednesday, it will be a review day. We'll review everything that could be on the, the might be on the test. Then Thursday, we'll have the day to do the test. If you need private room or anything like that for the test or just want a private room, that's fine. Um, I'll leave it up to you to set that up with the library. And you can take your test down there. But just meet here at the beginning of class. If you want to make sure you have extra time, I give you unlimited time on your tests. So you'll be able to take as long as you need. So if you want to come at the beginning of class and grab your test and, and work on it, that is fine. Or if you want to start early, if you've got other classes after this one that you want to make sure you're done for, um, that is fine as well. I'm in the room here at 730, so... Stop on it and grab your test. Other than that, anybody have any questions on anything we've done today? Okay. So like I said, make sure you do that quiz. 
and then you can get started on the homework for Monday. We'll finish up the new material tomorrow. You guys have a great day.